Welcome to uh, our part two of Hebrew Festivals, lesson two. This is lesson two, part two from River of Life Bible College. And as you can see behind me, I have got um, a, a, di a chart here of the spring festivals of Yeshua. So the Feast of Yeshua, the spring festivals. And as you can see, we have over here, um, hopefully you can see that, over here we have uh, Passover, uh, Nisan 14, and the historical um, of that is Israel's deliverance from the angel of death and Egyptian bondage, fulfilled in the death of Yeshua on the tree, symbolic of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's Genesis 2 17. Yeshua there, thereby reverses the curse and the application repent and believe. So that's the feast that we're going to um, focus on today. Uh, in this particular um, broadcast lesson two. So let's have a look at Pesach. Let's have a look at this festival in greater detail. So if we have a look at Exodus chapter 12, and the Lord spake to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be unto the beginning of months. If you remember, um, Passover Nisan is the first month of the religious calendar. Uh, Speak to the, all the congregation of Israel in verse two, verse three there, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Verse five, Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. So that's the fourteenth day of Nisan. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take up the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses. So two side posts and the upper lintel of the houses. And here we have, of course, the picture of the Trinity. <clears throat> because the whole Trinity had to be in agreement for the redemption price of mankind. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw or sodden at all, in other words, watered down, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, etc. And you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains has to be burnt with fire. And you shall eat it with your loins girded and, your, and shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste for it is the Lord's Passover. For I shall pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Now, Egypt is a picture of the Babylonian system, a picture of the world. Both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment for I am the Lord. And Lord there, of course, is in capital letters, meaning Yahweh. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Remember Leviticus 17, verse 11, the life is in the blood. That's why blood sacrifices had to take place, because the life was in the blood for the Hebrew people to cover their sin. But of course, in Yeshua, it's like acid. It has completely erased the sin. Um, and this day shall be to you a memorial. And you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. So this feast is never, ever going to go away. It shall be kept for the rest of eternity. It is the Passover. It is the Lord's Passover. And in Yeshua, of course, we pass from death to life. OK, so let's have a look at a more in-depth uh, analysis of this. Now, this is one of God's commandments. For us to observe the feast of Passover and commandments means mitzvot, mitzvot in the Hebrew. And um, I'm going to go over about 25 points here. So for our Bible college students, of course, you will get a transcript for this. So there's, so there's no need for you to, to hurriedly try and write everything down. For our Bible college students, they will get a transcript of all of this. So the Passover was the beginning of months. What's the spiritual application of this? Nisan is the first month of the religious calendar. 
So receiving Yeshua into our lives is the beginning of a new covenant, new covenant, a new covenantal relationship that we have with God. Passover is the first of the feasts. Likewise, repenting of our sins and believing in the shed blood of Yeshua is our first step with our, for our walk with God. Point number two, the lamb was hidden for four days. Why four days? God commanded Israel to take the lamb on the 10th day of Nisan and set it aside until the 14th day of Nisan. These four days were fulfilled by Yeshua during the Passover week. Yeshua, remember, is the lamb of God in John chapter 1 verse 29, as prophesied by John the Baptist. He entered Jerusalem, in Hebrew that's Jerusalem, and went to the temple, Bet Hamikdash, Bet Hamikdash is a Hebrew for temple, Bet Hamikdash, which was the house of God and went on public display for four days from Nisan 10 to Nisan 14. You can read all about that in Matthew 21 and other, other verses of scripture. Okay, eschatology, Eschato eschatologically, these four days that the lamb was hidden is prophetic of the people's expectations that the Messiah would come 4,000 years from the creation of Adam as part of God's 7,000 year plan to redeem both man and the earth back to how things were in the Garden of Eden before sin came into the world. These four days are also prophetic of the Messiah, Yeshua, being hid from the world and not coming to the earth for four days or 4,000 years from the creation of Adam. A day is understood to be prophetic of a thousand years based on Psalm chapter 19 verse 4 and 2 Peter chapter 8, uh, sorry chapter 3 verse 8. Linking Psalm 90 verse 4 to each day in creation, God ordained each day in creation to be prophetic of a thousand years of time and the entire redemption time to take 7,000 years to complete from the fall of man in the garden of Eden until the end of the, of the millennial reign of Yeshua which is yet to come of course. Point three, the lamb was to be without blemish. Yeshua was the lamb of God without spot or blemish. 1 Peter um, 1 uh, chapter 1 verses 18 to 20. During the crucifixion week Yeshua was examined by many many different people including the chief priests and the elders, Pilate, Herod, Annas the high priest, Caiaphas the high priest, Judas the centurion and the repentant thief. Point four, the lamb was of the first year. Okay, the firstborn of both man and beast was to be set aside, was always to be set aside and given to God. The theme of the firstborn runs throughout the Bible. Cain was set aside for Abel, Ishmael was set aside for Isaac, Okay, and Esau for Jacob and Egypt was set aside for Israel. Spiritually, God gave us these examples to teach us that the firstborn after the flesh, that which is natural, is always set aside to bring forth the firstborn after the spirit, that which is spiritual. In this process, God distinguishes between the first or natural birth and the second or spiritual birth. The first birth constitutes us as sinners and the second birth makes us believers and children of the Most High God. And Yeshua, of course, was the firstborn of Mary, naturally, and the firstborn of God, spiritually. Point five has to be a male. Why? Through one man's sin, that sin came into the world, in other words, Adam. Because Adam was the first male and he sinned, so Yeshua must be also a male and must die to atone for that sin. Point six, it's a lamb for a house. God's intention was that all households should experience salvation. And we remember about Cornelius as regards that his whole house came to be saved once he heard about the, the, the gospel, the truth of the gospel. The lamb was a lamb for the house. So by believing in the Messiah, Yeshua, we become members of the household of faith. And we can read that in Galatians chapter six, verse 10 and Ephesians chapter two, verse 19. There is a progressive revelation of the lamb in the Bible. So there's the lamb for the house in Exodus chapter 12. Second, a lamb for a nation. And you can read about that in John chapter 11 verses 49 to 52. 
This is where the high priest Caiaphas prophesied that it was necessary for one man to, to die to save the nation of Israel. And finally, a lamb for the world. <coughs> Excuse me. That's in John chapter 1, verse 29. In Genesis chapter 22, we, we um, have the binding of the covenant, which is known as the Akida, Ak sorry, Akida, the Akida, the binding of the sacrifice or the binding of the co covenant. Because here we have Isaac in chapter 22, verse 7, and he says to his father, where is the lamb? When they're going up the mountains uh, to, have, to um, perform a, a sacrifice. And the lamb that Isaac asked about, of course, was Yeshua. And Abraham prophetically sees into the future uh, what God was going to do on that particular mount. Point seven, a Passover. A Passover lamb was to be killed between the evenings. Okay, between the evenings. The biblical day goes from evening to evening, from sundown to sundown, which is roughly 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. the next day. So that's the Hebrew day. You know, the evening and the morning was the first day we read about in Genesis. So the day 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. the following day is divided into two 12-hour periods. The evening runs from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. and the morning runs from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And each 12-hour period is divided into two smaller portions. From 6 a.m. to noon is the morning part of the day and then from noon to 6 p.m. is the evening part of the day. So the phrase between the evenings from Exodus chapter 12 verse 6 refers to the period of the day that goes from noon to 6 p.m. And that's exactly 3 p.m. Which is the ninth hour of the day counting from 6 a.m. Wow. So that's when Jesus, of course, gave up the spirit. So he died at the ninth hour of the day exactly 3 p.m. Point six. The whole assembly shall kill it. So every person who has ever lived on planet Earth is responsible or guilty for the killing of Yeshua. Um, he died for all sinners. No human being had the power to take his life. And therefore Yeshua laid down his life for us all of his own free will. Praise the Lord. So a whole congregation of people was involved in the death of Yeshua. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John show how the Sanhedrin, the priests, the Romans and the people of Israel all clamoured for the crucifixion of Yeshua and for his blood to be, to be shed. Point nine, the blood must be applied to the door. The only way into the house of God is through the shed blood of the Messiah, Yeshua, who is the door. Remember he said, I am the door. Okay, John chapter 10 verses 79. And the door, incidentally, is made of wood. Yeah? Because Jesus was hung on a tree. Yes. And the tree is made of wood, of course. Right, point 10. The body of the lamb must be eaten. So what's the spiritual significance here? Both the body and blood of the lamb speak of the body and blood of Yeshua. So we spiritually eat of the body of the lamb. When we eat his body, today symbolized by the bread, when we take the Holy Communion uh, meal which spiritually is the word of God I am the bread of life Jesus said by following the word of God and obeying the commandments of God mitzvot um, with sincerity of heart we eat of his body it must be eaten the same night Yeshua was crucified suffered and died the same night and it must be eaten with unleavened bread leaven speaks of sin as I've previously said so unleavened bread is without sin and of course Yeshua is the sinless son of God. It must be eaten with bitter herbs. What does that speak of, bitter herbs? Well, the bondage and burdens we experience whilst living in this particular world, in, the, in a type of Egypt. Yes, the, the bondage and burden of sin in our lives. But also the bitter herbs speak of the bitter things that come into our lives after we've accepted Yeshua. What is this referring to? Well, persecution, of course. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. Uh, blessed, are, blessed are you when people persecute you, Jesus says, uh, for his, his name's sake. Okay. Uh, the lamb must be roasted in fire. Fire speaks of judgment, refining and purification. Our faith, which in Hebrew is emunah, emunah, 
is judged and tested and refined by the fire. So it's refined and purified and comes forth as pure gold. And you read about that in Zechariah chapter 13, verse 9. James chapter 1, verse 12. And uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, 7. And of course in Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. It must not be sodden with water. The gospel must not be watered down. Unfortunately, this day, in, in our day and age, the gospel has sadly been watered down by various different denominations or traditions of men have crept in and the gospel watered down. The head, legs and other parts of the lamb must be eaten. So those who believe in Yeshua must feed on the mind of Christ. Uh, our thoughts must be his thoughts. Think on those things above. Um, Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, 1 Corinthians 2, 16 and various other scriptures I could allude to there. The legs of course speak of our walk with the Lord, Colossians chapter 2 verse 6. The lamb must be eaten in haste, must be eaten hurriedly. Bible believers must be quick to leave Egypt, a type of the world, the influences of the world, and run towards the life that is in the Messiah, in Yeshua. Remember Jesus spoke to Zacchaeus when he was up that tree. Uh, come down, uh, you know, make haste, he actually says to him, make haste, come down, I must abide with you this evening in your house. Um, so it must be eaten in haste, it must be eaten with our loins girded. Our loins being girded speaks about our heart's desire to eagerly, to eagerly serve the, and obey the Lord. So we stand therefore having our loins girt about with truth. Yes, and that's in Ephesians 6, 14. Lots of scriptures speak about our loins being girded, um, including 1 Kings chapter 18, 2 Kings chapter 4, Jeremiah chapter 1, Luke chapter 12, Ephesians 6, of course, as I've just mentioned, and 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. For all these scripture references for our Bible college students, you will have them all detailed for you in our transcripts. Shoes must be on our feet. Gospel of Peace, Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verse 15, that speaks of. A staff must be in our hand. Um, a staff in our hand speaks about the believer's authority in the kingdom of God in the name of Yeshua. You know, Yeshua said to his disciples, you know, all authority and power in heaven and earth has been given to me. Now you go. Now you have authority in my name to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to even raise the dead. Glory, glory to God. Point 12, it is the Lord's Passover. Mm. We follow Yeshua with all our hearts. We pass from death to life and from judgment into divine protection. Read Psalm 91 for that, divine protection. Point 13, it's the memorial. In other words, God remembers us. He remembers us and doesn't leave us in our sin. And we remember God. You know, we fellowship with him in his word and we pray, uh, etc. Point 14, it is to be observed at the going down of the sun. This was fulfilled by Yeshua at his crucifixion, of course. He, he was crucified and then um, between the evenings, uh, three o'clock, he gives up, the, uh, up his spirit. Point 15, it is the place where God would put his name. Yeshua was crucified in Jerusalem, yeah? Yerushalayim. And you can read about that in 2 Kings uh, chapter 21, verse 4. That's where God has put his name in Jerusalem, Yerushalayim. That's where Jesus was crucified. Not a bone of the lamb was to be broken, and that was fulfilled in uh, John chapter 19, verse 33. Not a bone of Yeshua is broken. They broke the bones of the thieves either side of him, but not, not Jesus. Point 17, there was to be an explanation of the service. This is what we refer to uh, in Messianic uh, tradition as the Passover cedar. There had, to be, there had to be an explanation of the service given. Point 18, the Egyptians were spoiled at the Exodus. Likewise, Satan was spoiled when Yeshua entered hell and rose again. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. Point 19, 
you must be circumcised to eat the Passover. Now, this isn't talking about physical circumcision. So, so the, the believing men amongst you don't, don't go rushing to the hospital to get yourself circumcised. That is, it's not talking about circumcision in the flesh. It was initially, but not now. Now we're called to be circumcised in our hearts. And you can find that in Romans chapter 2, verse 29. Romans 2, verse 29. Okay. Point 20, the Passover feast was to be a holy convocation and no work was to be done on it. What's the spiritual application of that? Well, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, we find true rest. We need to strive to enter into the Sabbath rest. Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. Strive to enter into his rest. Point 21, the Passover must be killed outside the gates of the city. Um, please don't think that it's a, the location of St. Sophia Church in Jerusalem. They did not crucify um, criminals, uh, thieves, murderers, etc. within the city walls. Always outside of the city walls, uh, people were crucified. And Jesus was actually crucified outside the city walls at a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. Whose skull? Do you know whose skull it, it is? It's actually the skull of Goliath, of course. Um, because King David buried the skull of Goliath in that place. And Goliath is a type of Satan, of course, and Jesus um, spoiled all the principalities, powers and rulers and, and half Satan in the Hebrew himself. Yes, so that's where King David had buried, buried the, the head of Goliath. I've actually been to Jerusalem and seen the exact place uh, where Jesus was crucified. And it's Today it's at the back of a bus station, not where St. Sophia's church is in the centre of the city of Jerusalem. Okay, point 22, there is healing in the power of the Lamb. Okay, Yeshua is the healer sent by God. And that's Psalm, read that in Psalm uh, 105, verses 36 to 38. Isaiah, of course, 53, verses 1 to 5. And 1 Peter 2, 24. And 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 26 to 30. Yeshua is the healer. He is Jehovah Rophe. Okay, the Exodus was on eagle's wings, point 23. We mount up as eagles with wings. We shall run and not grow weary. We shall walk and not faint, etc. Point 24, they sang a song of rejoicing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. During the Passover cedar, uh, which is the service and meal that celebrates the Passover, it always ends with a song of rejoicing and the declaration next year in Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And this can be seen, you can read about this in Mark chapter 14, verse 26. Finally, point 25, Israel is the firstborn of God. Wow. All those who accept the Messiah, Yeshua, all those that accept Messiah, Yeshua, are called the firstborn of God, even as Yeshua is called the firstborn of God. So read about that in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, Colossians 1, 15 and 18, and Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Well, that is um, more of an in-depth look at the Feast of Passover. We haven't, we haven't, or Pesach, we haven't finished yet. There's still an awful lot more to have a look at, um, including Revelation as to exactly when the year that Jesus was crucified, the exact week that Jesus was crucified. And I will be able to reveal that to you in later lessons. Um, there are some uh, mathematical calculations to do concerning that. So it does get a little bit tricky, but um, all of our Bible college students, of course, will receive transcripts and in-depth in detail concerning all of these things. So if you haven't already done so, then um, I strongly suggest that you enrol for our Bible college and, um, you know, which you can do for as little as 20, just, just 20 pounds, um, which I think is what, about 25 US dollars, something like that. Um, you can start with the first module, which you would like to, to study. There's 12 in total. Um, but of course, if you, if you um, purchase four in advance, and then it's just 65 pounds for four. Uh, or you can do the whole course for less than less than the whole 12 modules, get the whole 12 modules for less than 200 pounds. Study at your own own pace, of course, and uh, you can take all the exams online and also submit your dissertation, 5,000 word dissertation online. 
Okay, so that's just about it for today. So the Feast of Yeshua, we have the Spring Feast. We just quickly, um, as we've got about five minutes left, we can just quickly go down there. So then we have, after Pes Passover, we have the Feast of, I don't know if you can see there, we have the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, which talks about going through the desert or the Red Sea, the burial of Yeshua, three days and three nights, and he was literally three days and three nights in the belly of the earth. And then we talk about baptism, water immersion, that's mikvah in the Hebrew, sanctification and separation from evil. And then we've got the First Fruits Festival, Bikurim, which is Nisan, um, Nisan 17, coming out of the Red Sea, Yeshua's resurrection um, and life from the dead. Okay, and then finally Pentecost, which is counted from the 18th of Nisan, 50 days. Uh, the Torah given at Mount Sinai, the thunderings, God's voice split into 70 languages, pouring out of the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, and the Holy Spirit of ba baptism, evidenced by speaking in tongues, the early rain and the latter rain. Praise the Lord! So, that's the that's the briefly a summary of the spring festivals there, and uh, which uh, covers the four, first 4,000 years. So, that's that's everything for today's lesson and as i said um our bible college students will get a transcript of this plus extra uh information from a book um that we recommend that will also be sent uh, via email to to our bible college students that have, have paid their fees for this particular mo module so that's all we have time for um and um to our next lesson, um, which this is part two uh, of um, our lesson two on this course, Hebrew Feast. And uh, we look forward to lesson three and learning more about God's blueprint, the master plan of, of God, for the redemption of mankind, and an in-depth study of the Hebrew festivals. There's an awful lot more to go. And I know that you will seriously be blessed by this revelation of the word of God. Much more in-depth revelation insight to come. Well, that's all for me for now. Shalom. God bless.